there's a very important question here in regards to how do you deal with skin anxiety? How do you educate your patients? How do you support your patients? How, and Terry, tell us also your experience as well. Um, I'm just curious, like, do you prefer a scan to be done, you know, not over the, the weekend? Do you delay your scans to, you know, do it after a holiday in, instead of before? Or tell me about what you do and tell me about some coping mechanisms. Um, this is an area I think I, I really could use some help. You know, it's, it's, it's a really good question because as much as it is at the front end of the diagnosis, you think, okay, I got diagnosis, I'm doing treatment, it's all good now. No, this is not going away. You're going to be going back and forth for scans. You're in this for a marathon. I'm still at a three-month scan process, and I know that about myself now, that I'm going to get anxious, that I have to be intentional about doing things like getting enough sleep, getting enough exercise. If I'm starting to let my mind wander onto things that should be, I need to wear myself out more than usual. Okay, whatever that looks like for me, whether it's playing video games or exercising or indulging myself in a bowl of ice cream, whatever that thing is, I've got to give myself a little bit of space around it because it's, it is real and talk to someone else who gets it. And as much as the people who love you around you think they get it, they do not get it. And that's why I'm such a proponent of the community. My, my husband, my kids have been here every step of the way, but I need to have a safe space that I can go and I can talk it out with somebody else and tell them that, that inner fear. Because I know how hard it is and like I said, I use the example of the test. I, I failed tests. I failed my diagnostic tests. And where I feel the failure the most is when I have to go home and I have to look in my family's eyes and tell them that. And it's okay, they're still gonna love me, but if you frame it out in your own mind that I'm not failing the test, my body's not failing the test, it's just we're seeing what's there. We're getting to peek at what's there so that we can stay in front of it. And so as those anxiety starts building up, we've got a better chance of staying in front of it. You know, if you're ahead in the football game or whatever the game is, you've got a better chance of winning. And that's really a lot of it. Well, thank you so much, Terry. And I think, you know, there are so many pearls of uh, wisdom here. I actually have another question just off of that which is becoming even more relevant now, because as you know, there are a lot of institutions have an EMR and have a patient portal where the scan results, you know, the scan is performed on Friday, the results are re revealed and, and the patients obviously look at them on the portal. And then, you know, maybe I'm meeting with them on Monday or Tuesday. And, um, you know, by the time they're in the room, they're obviously, you know, have a lot of anxiety over the last three to four days. And there have been a couple of instances where I've been like, OK, well, yeah, the, the scan does say progression, but it's only, you know, mild. I think we are OK. We can continue the treatment. And, you know, they feel so relieved. But I feel like, you know, how, how do we cope with this? And um, are there any particular things as physicians that we should be looking into to kind of, you know, mitigate these kind of situations for our patients? Well, and that tells me what a great doctor that you guys all are, is that you care about that. Because we do care as the patient and we want to know. And each person, I've talked to patients that could fall on any different side of the equation. Some people want to do it before the holiday. Some people want to do it after the holiday. But once you've done it, now I want to know. Because I'm completely, the minute I finish that scan, I'm completely convinced. Okay, for example, I had to take a COVID test at one point. OK, in the 15 minutes while I was taking that COVID test, I was completely convinced I was dying from COVID. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I have had a tickle. You know, maybe I have been tired. OK, until the whole thing came back was negative. That's kind of what's going on in our mind, in our heart, that we've already got it. So there's to me, there's no such thing as a little progression. OK, it is. What am I going to do? I'm going to be doing something about it. So how can I best mitigate it? That's kind of an individual thing. And I think it would be a great piece of information to have for each physician that they put it on their chart. Does this patient want to know right away? I learned the hard way, don't get a test 
don't get a, don't get a CT scan when my doctor's on vacation because I had to wait a week. My family was about ready to lock me in a room, okay? Because I had to wait because there was nobody backing up, backing her up so I could get the results, right? And so, you know, those little pieces of information are crucial to us. And so if we know that going in and you know what it is we're looking for, right? Because it is on a personal basis. Yeah, all, all the points that you guys are making are, are very important. And we've all on the healthcare side of things, we've been through these conversations and these discussions where patients actually get a preview to their scans on the portal, for example, before we have the chance to talk to them. And the way I have learned, and we all are learning, right, throughout life in general, the way I've learned to do it is when I'm when I know that there's a scan coming up for one of my patients, I first ask them, do you want to have it done um, before your birthday, after that event? When is the timing going to happen? And then we schedule it that way. And then um, I, I usually try to schedule the scan and the visit with me on the same day where they have a visit after the scan happens. And then um, if that is not possible, um, I try my best, to the best of our ability with the limited time that we have, to actually call them with the results ahead of that weekend or before whatever event is happening. And then um, at the back end of things, if I forget, we are all humans. If I'm away, if whoever is covering doesn't have the time to call my patients, um, I always ask them, not just, just call us send a portal message, just ask us, what are my results? How do I interpret my results? What are the things that I should look out for? And even if the scans are stable, or even if the scans have good results and things are actually improving, there's a lot of medical jargon there that patients don't necessarily understand and don't have to understand, and that is tr is and is, isn't enough stressor. So um, for all the, the, the points that were made already and, you know, our own experiences, this is how I go about it um, and based on basically patient interactions. Yeah, I really like the answers that have been um, discussed thus far, both about scanxiety and, and use of the portal to look at reports. Um, I guess there's a couple other things that I uh, consider as well. I liked Terry's point about um, thinking about it as a football game and, and planning in advance. Um, and I think that um, even though I, I understand from the patient's perspective, that's the one piece of data you do not have, which is what does my scan look like? Um, uh, by contrast, on the doctor or the provider's perspective, um, we actually, in a lot of circumstances, care more about what is the physical exam? What are the symptoms that you're having? And what are the laboratory results um, rather than the scan? And the scan gives us a little bit of information, but I would say symptoms and what's been going on the past couple of weeks, that actually is more important to us when we actually make a decision. And so even though the scan um, on the patient side feels like that missing piece of information since you've lived with your symptoms for the past couple of weeks, the actual contribution of data that that scan provides is, is usually quite small um, in a visit. Um, the other thing that I would um, once again encourage uh, people to, to try to do is to try to, you know, if you're, if possible, bring an extra person uh, to that visit um, or see if there's a family member or a friend who would be available via speakerphone because I think those scan visits, um, sometimes after discussing the results of the scan, it's, it's hard to be in a good state to hear what else the, the doctor is, is recommending. Um, and I, I speak from personal experience of getting scans myself for medical conditions as well. Um, and so I think having that second set of ears is, is very important. Um, and then in terms of advice on looking at the report, I know it's it's hard to resist looking at the report before speaking to your doctor, but I actually highly recommend that to people because I think for sure there's, there's a lot of um, medical terms on there that just mean this is, this is fine, or this is a nodule, or you're, this is, sorry, this is a, a scar, or this is 
a normal organ that's shaped a little bit differently, but the, the terminology itself um, can look very scary um, or mean something different in, in normal plain English than it does um, in a text report um, by a radiologist. And the other thing to, to think about, uh, most of us practice at an academic institution is um, generally you may have heard of the, the July effect. And so in July, there's a lot of new people um, coming on like trainees, new doctors, new people in a new role. So I have seen that in July, we do see the, the terminology being used in scans to be a little bit different. And so I think for all those reasons, I think looking at the scan report text before talking to your doctor who's seen you for uh, many more visits is maybe not as useful as, as you might think. Um, and so I'm okay with my patients looking at their scan reports um, after uh, talking to me about the results, but I think it's, it's probably best, um, if possible, to resist looking at the text report before you talk to your doctor. Dr. Desai, I think you're muted. I was gonna say, I totally disagree with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, because I, I think what happens is it depends on where you are as a patient that you, where you are in your kind of like knowledge base, the more informed and the farther you are into it, the more you've learned how to read this. And so I am a hundred percent of the patients that I care about. And so now five years in, I mean, I can read, I mean, I know my report, I know my inside and out, right? And I know, okay, well, maybe they're going to consider this, you know, this is good or this is bad or whatever. If you're brand new at it, totally new game. Definitely, you need to resist that urge, but I think that it, it once you become educated about it, and, and I, I love being able to, um, I think that it does foster an opportunity for us as patients to learn how to learn with our doctors, right? And so, okay, KRAS is the KRAS is more than a biomarker, it's an acronym, KRAS Knowledge, Research, Advocacy, and Survivorship. And part of the, all of those things, you, my doctor, are the knowledge part, right? You're doing the research and let me advocate for my survivorship. And I think as we work together to do that, that's really when the beauty of it all comes together for us in, in fighting our lung cancer. Yeah, and I, I, I totally hear and agree with your perspective. I guess I was thinking more from like a, an individual who is not as knowledgeable as you are or informed or um, takes this sort of initiative. I, I feel like, um, in general, that's that's my general advice, but I, I definitely encourage my patients to engage and, and participate. And I love it when people have questions and, and thoughts and ideas and uh, you know speak up with what they're interested in or, or what their opinion is, because I think that definitely helps me decide um, and, and work with patients on, on crafting the best treatment for, for them. So definitely advocate for that. And thank you for that discussion. I think, Terry, what you're what you're bringing to the table is that there are, every patient is different and has different wishes and different desires and different experiences. And there are some patients that, you know, will not read a scan because they don't know how to interpret it, it causes anxiety, or they don't want to know, or they just don't want to think about it till they walk into the door. And there are some patients that, like you, you know, know every detail and know, you know, know what, you know, an, an increase in SUV is or or that we're following an adrenal nodule and they get it. And like, I appreciate all those different types of patients. And I think you just need to know your patient and know what and, you know, like know what they expect and what they want and, and try to find a middle ground somewhere so that they're not sitting, you know, with anxiety with without having questions answered, but um, but they're feeling like they're part of the team. So, so thank you for that discussion.